I got myself a knife. That is so cool. Look at that. Blade still in it. Good find, <laughs> KG. You call that a knife? That's not a knife. This is a knife. <laughs> Vegemite sandwich. I can't believe it. KG and I are on the way to Australia. Sydney to be exact. Oh. We're super excited to head inland to hunt some old mining towns and to look for giant gold nuggets in the outback. But first, we're gonna check out some of the cool stuff right here in Sydney. The opera house, the zoo, a boat ride, and because we can't wait to start swinging our coils, the world famous Bondi Beach. Australian beach, baby! Woo! It's a gun barrel off a 17th century ship. No matter where you go in the world, you're gonna find flip tops. Flip top in the park, baby! Another ocean beaten Australian coin. Holy crap, look how big this one is. 20, 20 cents? Look at it, it's the size of a half dollar. What do I have? 10, 20, that's 30, 35, 40 cents. I'm almost there. It's almost beer time. It's a beer cost. 10 bucks? <laughs> I got a long way to go. In addition to the Aussie coins, I found a spill of European coins and even one from New Zealand. KG thinks we might have enough for two beers. So we're gonna call it a day, grab some refreshments, and move on in the morning. You know what, Bondi Beach was cool, you know. We found some brand new coins and whatnot, but that's not why we're here. We're here for some gold and some genuine Australian nectar. So we're gonna head into the bush and find some. So we meet up with Warren. He's a great guy, a real Australian. He's a very experienced hunter, and he's gonna take us out all around these different areas where the gold miners were, and people were digging up gold in Australia back in the 1800s. We are psyched to hang out with this guy. Hey, Warren, you know what? I mean, I'm excited to find some gold, but I was wondering about that patch on your arm. How do I get one of those? Yeah, this kangaroo patch here. Well, I'll tell you what we're gonna do, guys. We're gonna, you're gonna earn this patch. What do we have to do to get it? Okay, let's make some rules here for you guys to earn this patch. You gotta find a kangaroo coin, an old Australian coin with a kangaroo on it. Oh, yeah. Or maybe a piece of silver, or maybe a gold nugget. Oh, oh yeah. Silver, gold, or kangaroos. What else could be more Australian? Yeah. That is so cool. There is no way I'm leaving Australia without that. I'll stay here until I find something. I'm so sure that I will beat you that I'm thinking Warren should only award one patch to the winner. Most Australian fine gets the patch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah. All right, it's on. All right, it is on. Let's go and get something there. First up is an old hillside where the locals tell stories about a woman that buried her gold, money, and valuables in her yard. We're going to see if we can find that homestead and maybe even a big old jar of gold. Yeah, back in the olden days, that lady took all of her gold, put it in jugs, buried it out in the yard. She didn't trust banks. Yeah, that happened here in Australia just like it did in the U.S. And I'm telling you, this has got to be the spot that Warren told us about. I say we hunt all these low areas here. This could easily be it. This is a nectar sector. I say we spread out and see what we can pluck. All right. KG and I, at first we weren't finding too much, but then all of a sudden the signals start to pick up and we felt like we were getting close to the homestead. Oh man, listen to that, just hammer. That could be an actual big, big coin. Listen to that, just hammer. That could be an actual big, big coin. That is just a perfect, smooth sound. 
Oh, look at this. Solid brass quality from the old days. It's so cool. I, I can't believe it. I've got this door handle and I'm thinking this absolutely has to be the doorknob that that lady used to go in and out of the house when she was burying her big buckets of gold in the backyard. KG and I, we're getting close to the jackpot. Oh, uh, there's a big hit right here. Something massive down there. This could be a tobacco tin full of nugs. Ah, oh, this is pretty cool. Check this baby out. I'm thinking I got myself a part of an old time lamp or something. Bringy, come here, check this out. Oh, look at this. That's huge. This is massive. I'm thinking it's an old time lamp oh, part, maybe. That's... Maybe she was coming out here, you know, to bury a jug of nugs, tripped over a kangaroo, went down hard, breaking the lamp right here. Hey, guess what? I got something to show you right here. What is it? Oh, there's a cool lamp part. This, yeah. could, this could have been the top to it or yeah. something. Yeah, it sits right here like this. I think you're onto something. If she's burying that stuff at night, there could have been lots of kangaroo incidents. You know what I mean? She ain't going to be prancing around in the daytime where somebody can see her with a giant jug of nugs. That's she right. She would be going out at night, maybe 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, maybe having a little sip of goat's milk and going out there secretly. Exactly. And she wouldn't have this blazing, you know, for secrecy. Oh, She'd low. have it down real low. So, She'd yeah. dial it back right here on this little dial. And it probably got down so low, like you said, it, it just went kind out. Of went, and then all of a sudden the kangaroos were on to her. They're, you know, bobbing and weaving, Stand coming up. in. Yeah, exactly. And she knew she had to get back to the house, runs back, and then dives in through the door. We should start writing this down because this is important historical information, you know. Yep. Let's keep hunting. Maybe we will find that giant jug of nugs. Good find, KG. Oh, hey, right here, there is definitely something here. It's not like silver or anything, but it's it's like a nice even mid-tone. That is cool. What is it? Oh, it's got some kind of design on it. It's got a star and a bird and some kind of flower, I think. This could have been a brooch or a locket or something that the lady had that lived here. I mean, I keep calling her an old lady just because she got old and died, but you know, I'm sure in her prime she was quite beautiful and attractive to the young men. I'm not saying anything bad about her. She's an awesome lady and she knew what she was doing with gold, that's for sure. She buried some out here somewhere and so far nobody's found any that we know of. After that locket popped out, I was feeling pretty good about myself, but almost immediately, KG gets hot and starts pulling up all kinds of potential game changers. Ah, uh, there's the sweet sound of nectar, baby. Check that out. That is cool. Old time keyhole. That's a massive keyhole. I mean, that's a peepin' Tom's dream right there. Look at the size of that. Keyhole in the park. <laughs> oh, look at there! <laughs> Check out this massive old buckle. Maybe she had too many beans that day, so she was trying to stretch the belt around, you know, and get it hooked up there, but she finally got it latched as she was walking out the door. Ping! 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 <laughs> Look at this, looks like some kind of a pin or a badge or something, I'm thinking. All of a sudden there's like an X in there. Maybe it's a military pin, I don't know. This is pretty cool though. Maybe some secret society or something had these super awesome badges and the guy went out there, tripped and fell and lost his. So I'm thinking I could be an honorary member of a secret society down under. After KG's impressive little rash of relic recoveries, I finally stumble onto a decent signal. This sounds awesome. And this isn't just any signal. Look at this. Oh, yeah. KG, KG. <laughs> KG and I are working our way toward the gold fields of Australia, searching for Aussie artifacts in several small towns and mining sites along the way. We're hunting a site where it's rumored that an old lady buried jars of gold in her yard. K 
KG's been tearing it up, but I just got one of those perfect hits that every detectorist hears in their dreams. This sounds awesome. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah, look at this. This is gonna be awesome because I just saw the edge of roundness and it's got like a little reeded edge on it. It's gonna be something good. KG, KG, come here. <laughs> what do you got? Just look at the edge of it. Just look. Oh, that's a silver coin, baby. <laughs> nice. First nice. silver coin in Australia. Now you you might not get it no, back. let me open it up. Oh, it's pretty that's, cool looking. Look at that. It's gotta be silver. What's the date? Six, six pence. With, six pence. Look, it's got a kangaroo on it. It's got a no. kangaroo. <laughs> 1910! 1910! <laughs> you guys know it, I know it inside my own head. I love silver coins, and here is one. Oh. And it's got a kangaroo on it, and a big weird bird. 1910 silver kangaroo coin in the park, buddy. <laughs> Six pence. That makes me jealous. I could be in trouble on this one. Australians didn't have their own commonly used coinage until 1910, when their first silver coins were minted. Those first coins were modeled after the British pound and included shillings, sixpence, and threepence coins. First time in Australia, the taste of silver. We'll see if it tastes any different than in the US. <laughs> Yeah, and in that one hole, you actually earned your patch because you got not only, you got a silver coin, but you got a kangaroo on it. Yeah. So that's an instant patch from Warren. Yeah, I should have got two patches for that. Maybe, maybe you will. Well, we didn't find the elusive jar of gold, but we definitely found some cool stuff. We've got a bunch of other sites lined up, so we're gonna move on in hopes of scoring some more finds down the road. We're gonna head to Raywood. This is an old time town. There's a couple of old churches there, some old home sites. Hopefully we can dig up some nectar there. Man, that is just screaming loud. I cannot wait to see what this one is. Oh, it's right there. It's right there on top. Definitely solid brass. Look at that thing. Man, that is super old. I'm thinking top of an old bed post, an old brass bed. Here we got an old town. We got a hotel right there. We got a hotel right there. I'm sure these beds got worn out. And then when they wore them out, they just bring them out and throw them away. And when the garbage wagon came by to pick them up, I'm sure when they're throwing them on, some of these knobs came flying off, rolled out wherever. Pretty cool old find though. Knob in the pot. Hey, I got a great hit right here. Got a really good solid hit here. And it sounds fairly big. Oh, look at this awesome old thing. It's like a brass ring or something. Yeah, there's a little screw right there. It probably screwed onto a top. Maybe an old time lantern or something. Maybe the preacher came out, you know, with this lamp. It was dark out. And he was gonna ring this old time bell that's sitting in the yard. You know, maybe he tripped and fell and broke off the handle. Bloop. The handle fell right here. Turns out by some miracle that I was right about the old lamp handle, and Warren confirmed it. It was definitely an old rain guide. Okay, that's a rain guide. This is off an old sulky or a buggy or maybe even a big stagecoach that went through that town 120 years ago. That's an awesome find. KG and I are hunting in Raywood at this super old church. So I'm trying to dig up anything, not just only cherry picking super good signals. I hear this big, loud, iron, ugly sound. I'm thinking there was stuff going on back in the gold rush days here. I'm gonna dig it up and see what it is anyway. Oh man, this is gigantic, whatever it is. What in the world? Ah, oh, it's just some kind of weird old, oh, hold on. But look at the shape of this thing. I'm thinking this could have come off an old time wagon. Could have been used to take ladies to church on Sunday morning. The guys probably drove the women in on a, a nice covered wagon so they didn't get their beautiful dresses and jewelry all dirty before Sunday. 
Then they got to come here, went to an ice cream social, somebody dropped a thing of ice cream on the ground and a kid started crying and then he started getting mad and throwing rocks and one hit the horse right on the haunches and then it reared up, took off and the buggy got out of control, smashed into the old hotel across the street and wagon wheel came right off, rolled back to the church and plop right there. Since the 1800s, now I come along and find the history. Now we know what happened to the old wagon in the 1850s. Ringy out. KG is definitely a threat at all times. Whenever I think I'm ahead and starting to coast, he comes up with a game changer. Oh, there's something massive right here. Check this out. This is awesome. in the yard right next to this old time church and I get this massive iron signal. Oh, uh, there's something massive right here. Sounds like it's kind of got some iron in it. But you know what? We're digging everything because this is an ancient town, an ancient church, so you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> Check this out. This is awesome. I think I've only found like maybe one or two of these ever in my life. Look at this old time horse stirrup. People were probably riding their horses up here, going to church, maybe tying them to a post. Who knows? Maybe one of the horses got rattled, took off running, snagged the spur on a fence post, tore it right off. Sometimes gold is not made of gold. Sometimes gold is made out of iron. That is awesome. It doesn't get any more out back than that. Oh, here we go. Oh yeah, perfect signal. I got roundness in the hole, and not only that, I'm in Australia. I got big roundness in the hole. Check out the edge of this thing. Oh, this is probably gonna be like one of those big kangaroo pennies. Their pennies were enormous, the size of half dollars. Oh, it's even better than that. This is, this is so cool. I got a lot to say about this, so sit down and eat your popcorn, because here it comes, baby. This is an old dude right here. I'm pretty sure that's King George himself. And this is a British coin. I think it was like around 1910 or something where Australia had their own money. This is gonna be older than that. 19 oh something 1907. Looks like 1907. This is incredible. An old British penny from before Australia even had their own money. They used British money here. This 1907 British penny with Edward VII. That's an awesome old coin from the days when we used the English currency as our main means of exchange. Big giant British coin in Australia in the park for Ringy. Raywood was a blast. We found some really cool stuff and the locals were excited to see history unearthed. Not sure if we found enough to justify a new wing on the museum, but maybe they'll set up a little display in town someday. We just rolled into another little town, grabbed some chow, and then hit an old site near a river where lots of foot traffic occurred back in the 1800s. What the heck? Oh, ho, 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 ho. a big fat coin. Look at the size of this, one penny, 1916. This is so cool, it's a little piece of history. Check the hole real quick. Are you kidding me? There's an, I guarantee you there's another coin in here. It's another big coin, look at the edge of it right there. This is it, this is what life is all about. I'm having so much fun. One penny, half penny, 1926. A half a penny was even huge back then. You spent a half penny and you got something for it. A loaf of bread, I don't know, a sausage, something. All right, let's just check in here. KG, KG, you gotta get over here. I just want you to be here for this, because this is so cool. What look, is look at the size of that coin. <laughs> Holy cow, look at that thing. Look at this, this was with it. Two coins? You got a spill? I, I got you a spill. You got an Australian Wait. land down under spill, baby. Oh, oh it's a silver. It's a silver coin. Yeah. 1936. Mm. 1936, 26, 
and 16. It's like every 10 years. How weird is that? I got the patch in the pot. <laughs> Three pence. Pretty weird. Never found one before. I love it. Kangaroo in the pot for Ringy. I got the patch. That don't mean oh. it's over though. That don't mean it's over by it, no it means. Don't, no, you're, you're KG. I know better. I mean, you know, five minutes from now, it could be another story. I hope so. <laughs> All right, but that's awesome. God, that, I'm gonna get back to hunting. Good job, buddy. Thanks, man. Good job. Coins in the marsupial pouch for Ringy. It's been another awesome day of detecting, and we just found out that Warren has something to tell us. When we started out, this developed differently to how we thought it was going to finish. We were going to give a patch for the most awesome find, but these two blokes have had a top time here. They've found some magic bits of Australian history. I'm going to award them both a patch. This is an authentic gold rush relic. That right there, that's a, that's a ripper of a find, that one. Both of you guys made great finds all week. We've got silver, we've got relics, we've got history here. So you've both earned your kangaroo patch. Hey. So I'd like to present you both with a yeah. Australian, honorary Australian kangaroo patch. There you go. That is awesome. We both won. Anytime you can pluck you know, history from the earth and save it, it's a win for history. It is. This stalemate is only temporary because we've got another full week of hunting the gold fields ahead of us. Eventually, someone's gonna emerge as the victor and someone's gonna have to suffer a humiliating defeat. Tune in next time and find out who comes out on top down under on Digging with KG and Ringy. Digging up nectar in the land down under, baby.